September 5th Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Isaiah chapters 21 through 23 of the Old Testament Here is a message about the desert by the sea. Like strong winds blowing in the south, one invades from the desert, from a land that is feared. I have received a distressing message. The deceiver deceives, the destroyer destroys. Attack, you Elamites! Lay siege, you Medes! I will put an end to all the groaning. For this reason my stomach churns, cramps overwhelm me like the contractions of a woman in labor. I am disturbed by what I hear, horrified by what I see. My heart palpitates. I shake in fear. The twilight I desired has brought me terror. Arrange the table, lay out the carpet, eat and drink. Get up, you officers, smear oil on the shields. For this is what the sovereign master has told me. Go, post a guard. He must report what he sees. When he sees chariots, teams of horses, riders on donkeys, riders on camels, he must be alert, very alert. Then the guard cries out, On the watchtower, O sovereign master, I stand all day long. At my post I am stationed every night. Look what's coming, a charioteer, a team of horses. When questioned, he replies, Babylon has fallen, fallen. All the idols of her gods lie shattered on the ground. O oh, my downtrodden people, crush like stalks on the threshing floor. What I have heard from the Lord who commands armies, the God of Israel, I have reported to you. Here is a message about Dumas. Someone calls to me from Seir. Watchman, what is left of the night? Watchman, what is left of the night? The watchman replies, Morning is coming, but then night. If you want to ask, ask, come back again. Here is a message about Arabia. In the thicket of Arabia you spend the night, you deed and night caravans. Bring out some water for the thirsty. You who live in the land of Tima, bring some food for the fugitives. For they flee from the swords, from the drawn sword, and from the battle-ready bow, and from the severity of the battle. For this is what the Sovereign Master has told me. Within exactly one year, all the splendor of Kedar will come to an end. Just a handful of archers, the warriors of Kedar, will be left. Indeed, the Lord God of Israel has spoken. Here is a message about the Valley of Vision. What is the reason that all of you go up to the rooftops? The noisy city is full of raucous sounds. The town is filled with revelry. Your slain were not cut down by the sword. They did not die in battle. All your leaders ran away together. They fled to a distant place. All your refugees were captured together. They were captured without a single arrow being shot. So I say, don't look at me. I am weeping bitterly. Don't try to console me concerning the destruction of my defenseless people. For the Sovereign Master, the Lord who commands armies, has planned a day of panic, defeat, and confusion. In the Valley of Vision, people shout and cry out to the hill. The Elamites picked up the quiver and came with chariots and horsemen. The men of Kerr prepared the shield. Your very best valleys were full of chariots. Horsemen confidently took their positions at the gate. They removed the defenses of Judah. At that time you looked for the weapons in the house of the forest. You saw the many breaks in the walls of the city of David. You stored up water in the lower pool. You counted the houses in Jerusalem and demolished houses so that you could have material to reinforce the wall. You made a reservoir between the two walls for the water of the old pool, but you did not trust in the one who made it. You did not depend on the one who formed it long ago. At that time, the Sovereign Master, the Lord who commands armies, called for weeping and mourning, for shaved heads and sackcloth. But look, there is outright celebration. You say, kill the ox and slaughter the sheep, eat meat and drink wine. Eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. The Lord who commands armies told me this. Certainly this sin will not be forgiven as long as you live, says the Sovereign Master, the Lord who commands armies. This is what the Sovereign Master, the Lord who commands armies, says. Go visit this administrator, Shebna, who supervises the palace, and tell him, What right do you have to be here? What relatives do you have buried here? Why do you chisel out a tomb for yourself here? He chisels out his burial site in an elevated place. 
He carves out his tomb on a cliff. Look, the Lord will throw you far away, you mere man. He will wrap you up tightly. He will wind you up tightly into a ball and throw you into a wide open land. There you will die, and there with you will be your impressive chariots, which bring disgrace to the house of your master. I will remove you from your office. You will be thrown down from your position. At that time, I will summon my servant, Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will put your robe on him, tie your belt around him, and transfer your authority to him. He will become a protector of the residents of Jerusalem and of the people of Judah. I will place the key to the house of David on his shoulder. When he opens the door, no one can close it. When he closes the door, no one can open it. I will fasten him like a peg into a solid place. He will bring honor and respect to his father's family. His father's family will gain increasing prominence because of him, including the offspring and the offshoots. All the small containers, including the bowls and all the jars, will hang from this peg. At that time, says the Lord who commands armies, the peg fastened into a solid place will come loose. It will be cut off and fall, and the load hanging on it will be cut off. Indeed, the Lord has spoken. Here is a message about Tyre. Wail, you large ships, for the port is too devastated to enter. From the land of Cyprus, this news is announced to them. Lament, you residents of the coast, you merchants of Sidon who travel over the sea, whose agents sail over the deep waters. Grain from the Sihor region, crops grown near the Nile she receives. She is the trade center of the nations. Be ashamed, O Sidon, for the sea says this, O fortress of the sea. I have not gone into labor or given birth. I have not raised young men or brought up young women. When the news reaches Egypt, they will be shaken by what has happened to Tyre. Travel to Tarshish. Wail, you residents of the coast. Is this really your boisterous city whose origins are in the distant past and whose feet led her to a distant land to reside? Who planned this for royal Tyre, whose merchants are princes, whose traders are the dignitaries of the earth? The Lord who commands armies planned it to dishonor the pride that comes from all her beauty to humiliate all the dignitaries of the earth. Daughter Tarshish, travel back to your land as one crosses the Nile. There is no longer any marketplace in Tyre. The Lord stretched out his hand over the sea. He shook kingdoms. He gave the order to destroy Canaan's fortresses. He said, you will no longer celebrate. Oppress virgin daughter Sidon. Get up, travel to Cyprus, but you will find no relief there. Look at the land of the Chaldeans, these people who have lost their identity. The Assyrians have made it a home for wild animals. They erected their siege towers, demolished its fortresses, and turned it into a heap of ruins. Wail, you large ships, for your fortress is destroyed. At that time, Tyre will be forgotten for 70 years, the typical lifespan of a king. At the end of 70 years, Tyre will try to attract attention again, like the prostitute in the popular song. Take the harp. Go through the city, forgotten prostitute. Play it well. Play lots of songs so you'll be noticed. At the end of 70 years, the Lord will revive Tyre. She will start making money again by selling her services to all the earth's kingdoms. Her profits and earnings will be set apart for the Lord. They will not be stored up or accumulated, for her profits will be given to those who live in the Lord's presence and will be used to purchase large quantities of food and beautiful clothes. God, I was reading uh, Oswald Chambers, one of my favorite Christian writers, and he was actually talking about Isaiah. And he said, God did not direct his call to Isaiah. Isaiah overheard God saying, who will go for us? The call of God is not just for a select few, but for everyone. Whether I hear God's call or not depends on the condition of my ears and exactly what I hear depends upon my spiritual attitude. And in this, these couple chapters, well in all of Isaiah, but in these couple chapters, Isaiah is definitely talking about that attitude. Um, we can either have an attitude of faith and trust and love and this growing relationship with you, or we get to have an attitude that it's all about us, the selfishness. And when Isaiah says, 
God, I want you to come intercede. I want you to come down and take care of this. And, and all of a sudden he realizes in chapter 21, what you have shown him will happen if you come down and intercede where he talks about his stomach churns and he feels like he's having contractions like a woman in labor and he shakes with fear and that the twilight he desired has brought him actual terror so if you come down and intercede in our choices here on earth although sometimes i truly wish that you would um, we we know it's it's not going to be good because we haven't been obedient now, for those of us who are saved, of course, there is an eternal promise that goes along with this. Even though there's discipline that happens in our lives, there is an eternal reward uh, that we are all looking forward to. But there's so many here on earth, God, that it is painfully obvious that they are not only living without a relationship with you, but they are arrogantly and with strong emotions denying you denying um, who your people are persecuting people now here in the United States we don't mostly see to the death part of persecution and we're blessed to have that but we do see constant persecution if we're online in the slightest um, from the people who who don't have a relationship with you God and this this desire to be their own gods takes over and you go on to talk about in uh, chapter 23 verse 7 8 and 9 where you're talking about the arrogance of tired a, a community that was all about money and that they would do anything for money and it is very clear in there that you will never ever be accepting make peace be okay with human pride with us having our own kingdoms with us making gods of of our own worlds and you will destroy us for doing that or discipline us for doing things like that god it's really easy to to make that black and white call for the people who don't have a relationship with you for the people who are arrogant selfish making it all about them it's it's easy for me to see because i used to be those type of people <laughs> really bad and, and and to me that judgment call isn't fair um, at least not coming from me who is a sinner as well and still chooses on various times throughout the day to create her own kingdom and be her own god because in this story what is incredible is even the prostitution of a city um, is eventually redeemed that we see after a period of time that you come in with your sovereignty with your incredible mercy and you redeem her and so even the people out there who it feels like there's never a chance for them uh, to ever want to hear about you, God, to ever want to uh, have eternal life with you, that right now, instead of being joyful and glorifying you, that they're persecuting your people and saying horrid things about you and your word, that it is very clear that your whole point is potential eventual redemption of these people granted it might take 70 years as, as isaiah talks about uh, but there's always there's always that hope and i keep going back to my life that i was such that person i was a person who did so many things that are denounced in the bible um, as though denounced in a way that there shouldn't be any hope for me ever to be a child of God and yet here I am <laughs> and it's crazy and it's awesome and I am overwhelmed with the blessings that I even get to be here but just like Paul talks about a lot holy cow if God could make a Christian a believer out of me he could do it with anybody don't you understand how big God is and I tell people that all the time don't you understand I was just like these these communities and towns and, and countries that Isaiah is referring to that did everything they possibly could to please themselves, to make it all about themselves and whatever they wanted, they would get at any cost. And for a very long time, I lived my life that way. And now I, I am blessed that I get to live my life for you, God. I don't always get it right. And I'm thankful that you allow me when I get off track to get back on track uh, with a very strong swoop of your arm <laughs> to put me back on track. 
but I definitely identify with with Tyre and with some of these other um, places and groups of people who their whole world their whole kingdom was themselves everything was about them um, they were able to through money get anything that they wanted and they would get money any way that they could and yet you talk about their redemption you talk about even though in Deuteronomy it says that that the money of, of a harlot would never be redeemed and yet here you are redeeming her uh, bringing her back to life and so Tyre's money will be set aside and be used for your kingdom rather than for her own world her own kingdom God I'm not sure nor will I ever understand why you love us so much that you are willing to bring even <laughs> someone like me into the into the family into the fold but I do know that what you've done with my life is you've set it up so I can glorify you so people can look at my life and go holy cow I knew Janelle when she was back there and look at what God has done with her life could he do that with my life and that opportunity to have my past and what you've done with my future be used to glorify you and be used for your kingdom it truly humbles me and I stand in awe that I was one of the people chosen to be redeemed that even though I was doing everything against you against your word against your people that you still loved me enough to take me out of those situations and put me here and fill me with peace and love and overwhelm me with your grace and your mercy and most of all your forgiveness of my past life God when Isaiah says here I am Lord send me I never had a chance to say that to you when my heart was black when I was making choices about my world because I didn't want anything to do with you and you came into my life and you chose me and since that time since you gave me a new heart there's been so many opportunities to be sent whether it's to my backyard <laughs> uh, through the internet and the mission trips you sent me on and God I can't imagine my life without you now for everyone listening on this video if you have a life that sounds like tires it sounds like mine that sounds like Paul's and you are overhearing God say who will go for us and you're ready to have your heart changed ready to have your life changed ready to have your past life used by God to glorify him then God I just ask that you reach out to those people and allow them to have that conversation with you there's no magic words there's no magic place to to do it all they have to do is where they're at right now is just start talking to you I know because that's what you allowed me to do and we just started to have conversations and my world became less and less and your world became more and more again God I'm I will never understand the love that you have for me and for everyone in this world I read about it I see it in my own life but it is baffling to me because nobody else has ever loved me like this nobody else has ever done what you've done for me in my life and I know you can do it for every single person living here listening here on this video today God wrap your arms around them for some of them this is going to be a little bit scary sort of like what Isaiah was feeling oh my gosh if I actually ask God to come into my life what's going to happen there may be a little bit of shaking and terror at their past life but that's where the miracle of forgiveness comes in that you will wash away all of their sins and make them white as snow and you will take care of them and you will love them and you'll reign over them in their lives 
and they will understand that your kingdom is so much more important than the kingdom we have built here on earth. God, I get really excited for people whose hearts haven't been changed yet, that they have that opportunity to go through what many of us already have and experience what is on the other side. And it's not always easy. I'm not trying to sugarcoat anything. But it's a completely new way of living. A new way of seeing things. A new way of handling things. And an amazing relationship with you, God. I thank you for your redemption. Of places like Tyre and people like me. Who couldn't be further away from your truth. From your light. From your purity. And yet you still... Comfort us and redeem us. Forgive us and fill us with hope. Thank you. In your son's name I pray. Amen. <laughs>